Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Write or Die show. I'm your host, Randy Lee Bosla. On the show, we interview other writers and we talk about mental health from their personal journeys. If you have not already hit that like and subscribe button, go ahead, do that now so that you never miss an episode. Today with us, we have Francesca Maria. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Pretty good. The weather's good. supposed to warm up, which is even better. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And where are you visiting us from? I am in California, Central California, near Monterey, about four blocks from the Pacific Ocean. I'm I'm gonna just come visit you. Please, anytime. Yeah. Always welcome. <laughs> Always welcome. Excellent. Um, so tell us who is Francesca Maria? So what a what a great question. And so many answers I could give. Um <laughs> I am an author of both fiction, nonfiction, um, horror genre, and then also a healing practitioner. I'm a Reiki master. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a teacher. I'm a drummer. I'm a mother of two furry cats, a wife of 27 years, the love of my life. Um, I've also written and published comic books. So wow, I'm kind of all over the place. I love it because so am I. People, I go on other podcasts and they're like, well, what genre do you do? I'm like, um, I have to pick one because that's going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> all the things. I want to do all the things. That's how I see it too. I see it just like that. Oh, this is awesome. I love you already. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> and the fact that you have two furry, lovely kitty cats is, it just makes it better. And what are their names? Max and Lois. Max is my tuxedo boy. That is my shadow. He follows me everywhere. You might see him at some point. Um, and Lois is my blind beauty. So she's all black and she doesn't have her eyes due to a bacteria issue. Um, but you wouldn't know it. She's amazing. She gets around just fine. Yeah. Yeah. One of my cats, Neo, he only has three legs because he was born missing a bone um, in oh, his wow. arm. So the Humane Society amputated and the same thing though, you wouldn't even wouldn't like, know you wouldn't yeah. know it at all. He runs mm -hmm. around all the time playing with the other cats and he's just a lovey baby. I have to kick them all out or they yeah. mess things up. Like when we first started and I had to readjust and get my microphone back up because they pressed the buttons that turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I love them. So it's yeah. okay. Oh, um, I, it was funny though, before, before I sat down, so I have four cats. So two of them had left the room and I shut the door and I was like, can I trust you two? And as soon as I sat back down in the chair, the one that was sitting at the window comes over. I'm like, okay, not trusting mm -hmm. you. And I her out mm -hmm. and then I look at Neo and I go, can I trust you? Cause he was sitting like on the other side on the ottoman. I go, can I trust you? And again, as soon as I sat down up, he gets, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. fine. Not trusting nope. you either. Out you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They, they love sitting near and around the keyboard and the camera. They're like, what's mom focused on? It must be something cool. And so like, he'll sit like staring at me right here, like half in camera. I'm like, no, that's not appropriate. You can't, you can't Right? But they just, they just don't listen. No. But I still love them. So it's okay. We love them so much. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we should stop talking about cats. Maybe I should make a oh, podcast wow. where it's just like animals all the time for like Let's 20 minutes of animals. <gasps> I'm, I'm down. Mm -hmm. maybe maybe I should probably you know focus on the ones I have because I just started a brand new one last week as well oh, um great. so if, congrats thank you so if any listeners missed that brand new episode it's called the neurodiverse world it is on the same channel for rb media um all of our podcasts are going to be on the same channel just to make your lives easier so go check out our first episode of neurodiverse world I'm sorry there's no guest it's just me talking about myself um but it's about autism so it is still a good episode um, and we are going to be having guests on the future for that show. It goes live on Tuesday. So be sure to check it out. Anyways, back to Write or Die show. Um, <laughs> so here we like to talk about mental health. So I always like to say to guests, start your story wherever makes the most sense for you. Okay, sure. Well, um, I started writing at the age of six to process the house that I was living in. Um, my house was haunted and full on poltergeist type activity stuff, doors opening and closing, TVs going on and off, lights going on and off, footsteps where there shouldn't be scratching in the closet. Like I could go on and on and on. 
So that was, you know, part of my experience as a child. And it left me feeling helpless, powerless, scared. I was scared all the time. I felt like there was something, you know, oppressive watching me like on my shoulders 24 seven from the ages of zero to 14. Thrown into that mix, you know, some of my family members, I'm the youngest of five. Um, some of my family members had violence and addictive problems. Um, and so besides being in a haunted house, the humans were also very scary to me. And so we never really talked about, you know, the violence or the scary stuff in my house. I didn't have an outlet except it's, writing. What approximate decade was this? 70s. Okay, then makes sense that nobody talked about it because mm -hmm. they didn't talk about in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. I'm going to even say the early 2000s. Like yeah. I feel like, and from all of the interviews that I've done, um, and this has been talked about on the show before, we didn't start talking about it until within the last decade, like yeah. not until the 2010s and, and beyond, it was very hush hush before. So I yeah. definitely get where you're coming from um, in the 70s. It does not happen. And you do, and you don't err. I'm going to put this in quotations right. for everyone who's listening and not watching. I have little quotations. You do not air your dirty laundry to the rest of the world. A hundred percent. You keep it behind closed doors. You know, you pretend like you're the Joneses and everything's happy and, you know, like the Brady Bunch, but you never talk about what's going on in your family. There's a lot of shame around having a dysfunctional family. And I also grew up, you know, my parents were very strict Catholic. And so it wasn't part of their religious upbringing to accept things like ghosts. You were either, you know, dead in heaven or you weren't like there was, there was no middle ground mm -hmm. uh, for hauntings. Um, and so they just didn't believe us and having had this, you know, terrifying experience and not having your parents support you, believe you, protect you was another layer of trauma that, you know, I'm going to be 50 tomorrow. Oh, a happy birthday tomorrow. And for everyone who's listening, we they will wish you a happy belated birthday. Belated birthday, right. Based on when this will air. But, you know, I say that because I'm still dealing with that trauma and still dealing with that little six-year-old who's still inside me, who's still afraid, who's still, you know, anxious at times, who still is afraid of the dark, you know? So there's, it's, you know, stuff that happens in our childhood um, it sticks with us. And it's, you know, again, writing is a way of me kind of expressing that and kind of healing through a lot of my traumas. And I think that, I mean, there, there's definitely been research on it, but writing is one of the top coping strategies that mm -hmm. has been discussed on this channel. So obviously, even without the research, which there is, um, by personal accounts, writing is so therapeutic. It is. I attest to it too. <laughs> right. And so my other, you know, side of what I do, I do um, holistic healing. I'm a healing facilitator and I've written an, a different book on wellness. But what I tell a lot of my clients who struggle with their own anxieties, their own PTSDs is to write about it, yeah. you know, get a journal, you know, write a letter to your younger self, you know, be the parent now that wasn't there to protect you then. And yeah. it's very cathartic. Um, and a lot of people can finally release some of that baggage when we go back and address it through writing. Yeah. There, when I was working on my PTSD booklet with my therapist earlier this year, there was always homework and it was always written, right? So <laughs> there, there was all these worksheets and it wasn't, it wasn't think about these questions. It was write these questions and it didn't have to be paragraphs, you know, point form was fine, but there's something more to writing it than yeah. to just think about something. That's right. And, and for my clients, what I suggest is they do it with pen and paper because there's yes. something like it like exercises it out of your being when you do it in pen and paper. It doesn't seem to have the same weight when you do it on your phone or when you do it on, on your laptop or your computer. Mm -hmm. So something about physical writing. And then, you know, if it's a trauma or let's say you had abuse as a child or, you know, some someone did you wrong and you write a letter to that person or to that event then you can take that letter and you can burn it as a way of symbolically releasing it. You can't do that if it's, you know, on a computer. You can print it out, but it's not the same thing. No, it's not. Delete. No, it's, right. yeah, it's definitely right. not the same. It doesn't and, have the same feel. <laughs> right? And I love that writing the letter to somebody else to release it from you. And I've said this before on the show because it's 
it's just such an important point. When you hold on to your anger, to your sadness, to whatever emotion it is, when you're hanging on to it based on another person's actions, all you are doing is hurting yourself because that other right. person, they're not thinking about you. That's right. A hundred percent. It's a way of healing yourself. And a lot of my clients too, they're so worried about putting negativity out there. Like if I write a letter that said, you did this to me and how dare you? And you know, blah, 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 that they're sending negativity to this person. I said, no, 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 no. Has nothing to do with that person. All we're doing is getting it out of your own system so that you're not carrying it. Because, you know, the holistic health part of what I do, that anger gets stored in the gallbladder, in the liver, and it actually becomes physical manifestations of illnesses. And so it's it's important to get that out because if you don't, it's going to have a lot of health ramifications down the road. Yeah. I've, I've read some books when I was doing my yoga training. I can't remember what it was called. The, the body, the body speaks the mind we had to read for one of the trainings. And that's nice. pretty much what it was all about. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So have you ever written one of these letters to oh, release it? So many, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it comes and it's a, you know, one of those onions you keep peeling back and you're like, God, I thought I was done with this. And then something will happen and it'll re-trigger you. Um, Someone will say something to you. You'll see something in a movie or, you know, some, something will come up. And if you still like physically react to something, that means you haven't processed it. If someone you know says something, you're not triggered by it anymore, then great. You're healed. Check mark done. Um, but I, I'm constantly getting um, re-triggered by stuff. And so letter writing is a really big part of that. I do mine a lot because I'm a kind of witchy gal. I do it on the solstices. I do it on full moons just to add a little extra power to them. So I'm, I'm constantly writing letters and burning them. Yeah. Yeah. So then obviously, you know, it works. It does. Yeah. And I feel like hundred percent lighter. I'm healthy. I'm abundant. I've got healthy relationships, healthy relationship with myself, which is the most important thing you can have first in mm -hmm. order to be a healthy person in other relationships. So yeah, I love myself. I love my life. I love my everything. So, Good. and it took me a long time to get there. Yes. Um, so as you're talking about this, writing the letter to the other person, when I was writing goodbye too soon, the first draft had a lot of that anger that I held against my brother. So everyone who's listening right now, unless you're a brand new listener, you should know what goodbye too soon is, but for the new listeners, goodbye too soon was my um, book released last month in May of 2023. And it's about um, the death of my brother by a drug overdose. He was 38. His his 40th birthday just actually just passed last week. Um, I'm sorry. Thanks. And so that first draft was very much like you were saying, writing that letter. And sorry, it was on the computer because, you know, I wasn't going to write it out and then oh, retype yeah. it. <laughs> but I, I'm writing it. And all of that anger at him for doing what he did, not again. And I know in my head that an addiction is a mental health, but when you're in the grief, right. grieving process, it, it's hard to, to remind yourself of that. So I'm, you know, why did you do this? Why did you choose that? All of these different things. Right. Um, so then when I went back in, into the second draft, I was like, Oh, delete. <laughs> but it was so cathartic to actually have it out there and be able to delete it. And then it, it was just like you said, it was like, huh, a yeah. weight has been lifted. Yeah. And, and it's so, it's so powerful. And I, I hate to be over generalized, but most of us women don't have a way of expressing anger. You know, we don't have, we're not well, encouraged as because women are. aren't supposed to be angry. angry. It's not ladylike. Yes. You know, we don't have, we didn't grow up with, you know, encouraged to be in physical sports or have like ways of getting out and working out our anger. And so a lot of us think again, that we don't want to send negativity out there. Or it's not nice to be angry, but it's a human emotion. Like we we have anger for a reason. It's supposed to teach us something, holding on to it and swallowing it only makes us sick. Exactly. Yeah. I think that we need to accept all of the things that we are, right. um, which has taken me a long time. Like, it's not like I knew that my whole life. <laughs> I just discovered this recently as well. <laughs> But we need to accept all of the things that we are, which includes all of the emotions that we have, because every human being has all of the same emotions at various times throughout their life. Sure. And when we try to push them down or forget about them, ignore them because, oh, 
women don't get to feel angry. Men don't get to feel upset, right? When we try to pick and choose, it just, it doesn't work. It just, it hurts us. And it causes us to be ill. Yeah. You know, gives us a lot of diseases, autoimmune disorders, um, diabetes, weight issues. I could go addiction issues. Like I'm sure you talk about all those things. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so as you're, as you're a kid living in this dysfunctional haunted house, um, and you start writing, how did things kind of progress from there for you? Um, from writing or just in general, in general, just in general. Um, well, speaking of illnesses, I developed a, it wasn't an eating disorder. There's this really rare thing that I still struggle with. Um, I can't even pronounce it, but it's something where there's rings in my esophagus that gets, you know, smaller and it kind of, it narrows my esophagus. So at the age of seven, I started choking. I started, um, choking on bread or whatever. And my mom would have to start doing the Heimlich maneuver on me, um, about once every six months. And then it became once every couple of months and then once a month. And then almost every time I would eat and this, it was awful. And the doctors were just like, yeah, we don't know what's wrong with her. She needs to chew better. (laughs) Thanks. And this, this affected me up until my thirties until you know, I got married. My husband had to be trained by my mom on how to do the Heimlich maneuver on me. And so my husband started to take over that, that duty. Um, so physically not processing that trauma, um, not being listened to, that's the throat chakra, you know, being heard, like there's something in the house. I'm scared. No one's listening to me. My voice doesn't matter. I was the youngest of five kids it makes sense that that's what was going on. My throat literally started to just close up on itself because my voice didn't go anywhere. Um, so once I understood that and I found the right doctors with the right diagnosis and I worked on my emotional self, my younger self, that went away. You know, I, I haven't choked since I was probably 35. Wow. Um, and so that's, I mean, that was a miracle for me to have that revelation of how trauma can really be that debilitating for that long physically. Yeah. Right. Um, and so it affected me in that way. Um, but it also gave me a lot of artistic outlet. So it wasn't all negative. So the first story I wrote at the age of six was about a kid, a group of kids who stumble on a haunted house at the end of a cul-de-sac. And it was the story progressed with the kids finding a solution, getting over their fear, overcoming it, like, you know, overcoming their challenges. And so since then I've always written stuff, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, when I'm, when I'm anxious, when I'm scared. So, you know, I just had a book come out in April myself, um, on it's my COVID baby. When COVID hit, I was in complete panic mode. All of my childhood fears came up, all that uncertainty, all of that sense of unsafety and the unknown just came rearing back up. I'm like, you again? Uh, So I got rid of you. Right. And so I just started writing again. And I started writing all of these like horror stories of different monsters, you know, vampires, witches, ghosts, because that's what I like. And that was a really great way of me just kind of working through my anxieties and my fears. And so, you know, there's so many ways I can answer that question because that experience growing up in a haunted house with a dysfunctional family made me who I am, a empathic healer, a, you know, someone with a big heart that empathizes with others, pain, um, a adult suffering from childhood trauma, a horror writer, a punk rocker, like, like I, all the things that I am came from that experience, um, in my childhood. And, and again, like I said earlier, I love who I am. So hold on. When I said who is Francesca Maria earlier, you did not mention being a punk rocker. Oh, and well, yeah, you do not look like a punk rocker, which I love because never judge a book by its cover. But I love it. I got my tattoos. I got my piercings. Yes, yeah, I'm a drummer. I was a punk rock drummer for um, a band in the 90s and we toured a lot. And that's how I met my husband. Yeah. Okay. As you were talking, I like picked up that one. I'm like, um so how are you doing now Mm -hmm. I'm doing great um one of the things I tell my clients a lot is 
when things are easy, you're, you're on the right track. Um, everything in my life is easy. I don't feel like there's any obstacles. I don't feel like my childhood stuff is holding me back any longer. I use it as a very much an empowering experience. I'm not a victim of it. I'm a survivor of it. Um, I am super well adjusted. I, I love being able to help other people in their trauma. So the healing work that I do is so rewarding. I help people with grief, mental illness, eating issues, et cetera. Um, and that's been completely rewarding. Every time I help somebody, I I'm healing myself a little bit too. Grief is part of that. Um, and so I'm doing, I'm doing a, okay. Awesome to hear. I love that. Um, and so I always like to ask for the listeners, what would you, what piece of wisdom would you give them for somebody who is going through, um, I'm going to say that they feel like their voice isn't being heard because that mm -hmm. seemed to have the biggest physical, um, as well as mental, obviously, but physical effects on you. So what, what's your piece of wisdom to them? Right. You know, um, write a letter to yourself. Um, if there's nobody to listen to you, you are that person, you know, be your own best listener, but give yourself the freedom and the license to speak your truth. Whether again, that's Maybe you having a conversation with yourself and looks a little bit weird, or you, you know, write a letter to yourself, but there's your voice matters. Your truth matters. Doesn't, it doesn't matter if anyone cares or wants to hear it. It's important, you know? And so mm -hmm. don't let anybody tell you, um, any different, you know, what you have to say and what you feel is important. That is amazing. Non-advice because we don't get advice. Amazing wisdom. <laughs> Um, so tell us what you've written. I mean, you've a little bit hinted at us, but share with us, especially what was that one that just released in April? Sure. Yeah. Um, they hide short stories to tell in the dark, uh, just came out in April from Bridget's gate press. It's my love letter to horror tropes. So there's 13 stories in there. Um, some of them ranging from, you know, haunted house stuff, like a little bit autobiographical in there. Um, and then there's like fun, weird alien cowboys and windigos and just all the creatures that go bump in the night. And why um, have I not read this or heard of this yet? <laughs> you know, I just love it. It's, it was, again, I wanted to have something positive to come out of COVID. Yes. And so this is what I wrote during 2020. And then I marketed and pitched it in 2021 and got picked up. Yeah. Yeah. It um, sounds like a really fun read. I, I mean, I love all things horror. So it sounds like a really fun read. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's my baby. I love it. Um, and then years ago, I wrote a nonfiction book based on my experiences with my clients on the holistic healing side. It's called, why are you sick? Practical tools for wellness. And I go into energy chakras, the mind body connection. I talk about my personal story with the throat stuff. I talk about, you know, grief, uh, losing my best friend, in a car accident, my mom to cancer and what that does to you and your mental health. Um, so that book came out under a different pen name. Uh, Francie Soito is the pen name for that one. Okay. Okay. And was there a reason that you chose a different pen name? Yeah. So they're both my names. Uh, um, so my, my full legal name is Francesca Maria Soito. And for my horror stuff, which is a different audience altogether, Francesca Maria. And for my healing practice, it's Francis Soto. Because if my healing folks got a hold of my horror stuff, they'd probably be like, who is this weird person? You know, there's this. But the little... secret's out of the bag. I know. I know. Shh. Oops. Or just <laughs> edit that out. I'm just kidding. That seems like work. <laughs> I'll admit, when I first... Like, cause my first couple books were all nonfiction. And so when I first started going, hmm, I'm going to release a sh collection of short, scary stories. I debated whether or not I should do a pen name because I had heard and read from other authors and other, you know, people in the industry who know what they're doing say, you know, because it's a different audience, you know, you want to separate yourself. And I was like, but you know what? This is all me. So if you don't yeah. like it, then that's too bad. That's right. Well, and it for me, they're both me because they're both my names. You know, they're yes, just different yeah. versions of my names. And so, yeah, it's if I made up a name, it might be a little disingenuous. But I mean, they're both 
me they're both you yeah exactly but I definitely <laughs> the thought had crossed my head and I was like mm-hmm. uh plus then I got to keep it all straight and it just again it just yeah. seemed like extra work and I was like no it's all me yeah that, it's it's all that's smart because it is a lot of work for me I've got two different brands that I have to manage all the time a lot of work yeah and so I was just not down for that <laughs> I don't blame you <laughs> um so thank you for letting me know that that was the right decision for me yes <laughs> Um, and so where do people, of course, get the books? So for my uh, fiction stuff, francescamaria.com. And for my nonfiction stuff, franciesoito.com. That's F-R-A-N-C-I-E-S-O-I-T-O.com. Excellent. Uh, and where do we follow you? Um, I'm all over the place. So on those two websites, I've got all my social handles. So I'm writer of weird for fiction, and then just Francie Soito on Instagram and Facebook. Excellent. Um, Anything last to say? You know, um, for whoever's listening, whoever needs to hear this, you're important, you matter. Um, Yes, you might feel broken. You're not alone. The goal in life isn't to be perfect. I'm quoting Jane Fonda here. The goal in life is to be whole with a W. And so if you're listening to this and you feel afraid, you feel alone, you feel broken, you're not alone. You're okay. You're going to get through it. We're here for you. Awesome. That is another wonderful piece of wisdom. So thank you again for coming on the show and uh, I wish you the best of luck. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. As always, thank you so much for the amazing guests that we have on the show. Um, Be sure to check out their links down in the description below. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and check out our merch store. We've got some very cool things on there. That's my favorite. Sorry, I'm busy ending the stigma. Um, But there's some other very cool designs. 10% of the proceeds always goes back to the Canadian Mental Health Association. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at RV Media because we have some great new shows coming up and you never want to miss any of those episodes. And remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly. Bye!